Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, I will be talking about A Wizard of Earthsea, the first book in the Earthsea cycle or series. Books of Earthsea is what this one's called. Uh, and this was a, a fun one because I read this book when I was quite young and I don't remember exactly when uh, But I had never I've never read any of the other books in it. I've heard good things especially about book two and uh, I'm really interested to, to continue But this is the first time that I had actually reread the book because uh, the first one I had read uh, many many years ago And the weird thing is this is one of those books. I, I feel like really uh, stuck with me I, I very specifically remembered some large parts of the plot, including how it starts kind of a midpoint, uh, as well as the ending pretty clearly. Uh, and I was I was really curious to see how much of that was actually correct or how much of it was me just thinking that was what correct. And uh, for the most part, this one really did. I uh, A huge amount of, of what I remembered was right. There were definitely details that he didn't. Uh, so I thought that was interesting, just how much this stuck with me uh, for a book I read so many years ago. So Wizard of Earthsea uh, was originally published in 1968. So definitely an older one. And it was published and intended for younger viewers younger viewers, uh, now I'm talking uh, YouTube, uh, younger readers, um, and it, it kind of, it does have that feel where it feels kind of like a fairy tale. Uh, it is told, uh, it, it's a story about a young boy, you know, becoming a wizard, and so kind of has that feel uh, and, and that kind of setup as well, but I think you can still enjoy it um, as an adult reader too. It's not done in any way where it's overly like really, really feels like it's it's for kids. So I think it's done a, a good job with that. For example, like uh, the Prydain Chronicles, which are children's books also from the 60s, feel much more like they're for kids uh, than this does in my opinion, although I still really enjoy those as well. Uh, but this, I feel like, still has value even as an older reader, uh, and so I did enjoy coming back to it. I, I will say, the thing with this, and I, I commented, it does feel kind of like a fairy tale. It's told from a very kind of impersonal way. It's a, it's a third person narration, but even then we're not really for the most part, we don't, you don't feel like you're getting into our main character Ged or Sparrowhawk into his head a whole lot. It's told more like an observer just watching these things happen uh, is kind of how it feels like. So this isn't a book where I like have strong feelings or connection to our main character or any of the other characters. Um, but what I think this does, uh, and the big thing and the reason I think it's stuck with me so long, is it really kind of ignites the imagination. Uh, and it sounds like that's kind of how uh, Ursula K. Le Guin, the author here, first started working on it. She kind of imagined this world where it's like, you know, this archipelago is this big collection of islands and places and kind of imagined it and then went through and discovered the story uh, as she went in and didn't really know necessarily some of the things that were going to happen, but just kind of explored uh, and saw what happened. And it, it has that feel in, I think, a good way uh, because we're just going through and the world and just kind of finding out about it and the magic that's set up is what I think is really, really interesting with this one. Um, it does follow, and granted, like I said, this is from 68, so uh, it, following the archetype of you know, a boy becoming a wizard, it's definitely something that's been done. But it's done in an interesting way here, and just kind of magic in general. Magic is very, very common uh, in this world. There's like, you know, every town has, you know, uh, a sorcerer or a witch of varying degrees, that kind of thing. Um, and so it's, it's pretty common, uh, but there is like the the like university of wizards basically uh where you can go to study and wizards are, are deemed to be like more powerful um and so that's kind of our get as the potential uh to go through and goes through kind of a different path uh but it's still uh it feels a little bit different like i said it's more kind of the discovery finding these different places meeting these different people there are some compelling bits told about the character but it's really more so the the world that just has me very, very interested in the thoughts about the world. There's a lot of magic comment, and the uh, the magic here is something I, I've seen done before too, but it's always stuck with me as well, which has to do with uh, the names of things. Uh, basically, if you know the true name of something, you can control it, and so determining the true name of things is very important. So this is the kind of thing like um, people in general, like they're, they're born with like they're given a name until they come of age to receive their true name basically uh and that true name they usually are only going to share with like family very very close friends that kind of thing because that can be used 
to you know take power over you and so that's why our, our main character Ged is the name he's given but Sparrowhawk is his wizard name uh, so that he doesn't give it and so just kind of those ideas um, I feel like too kind of captured my imagination as a child and still reading this um, I there's something about this world that really just does it for me as well I want to show really quickly the map here because this is the illustrated version um, the map itself is illustrated but uh, here's just the map and I, I'm a soccer for a good fantasy map uh, but once again it's it's all islands and this is kind of the area uh, there are other lands but it's a lot of, of stuff to explore um, and like the beliefs that if you just sail far enough, there's nothing like there um, is another thing too. It's these islands, but then once you get out to sea, there's just uh, thought to be nothing actually there. Um, which being a magical land, that could be true. We don't know for sure. Um, although it could just be a, a product of the time as well. Uh, but there's just there's a lot of interesting ideas, and like I said, it really kind of brings out the imagination here. I'll talk to, because uh, reading the introduction to uh, Ursula K. Le Guin talked a lot about how uh, she came up with this and how she was writing it and wrote it about like a young boy and then years later kind of realized that uh, she wanted to to write more like stronger uh, women into the books as well. And so like I said, I haven't read the later books. Also, the, the note too that uh, pretty much all of the characters in this book uh, are not white, uh, which is not usual for the time and also like uh apparently it was a, a really big bone of contention which makes sense um that uh the cover artists usually always uh would change that uh but we we have a change there uh with the characters and it's all these people living on islands which kind of makes sense typically if you're looking at like um most islands uh and i'm assuming this is you know kind of mid equator because like the far north is where you have people with lighter skin that kind of thing so it's just kind of for the time to something a little bit different um, the, the, the way we explore as well, um, I just f feel like it, it feels a little bit different. Uh, and part of it too is the, the prose is definitely a bit dated, I would say, in, in a lot of ways, which doesn't really bother me that much. I like reading a lot of classic fantasy, but uh, if, you, if you read a lot more modern fantasy, this may be an adjustment. I know some people who were doing the read-along in Discord said specifically it took them a little while to get used to it. Uh, if you read a lot of uh, more classic stuff, and it, you may not notice as much as well. Like I didn't notice a, a ton with it, um, but it, it was definitely, it, it reads uh, pretty differently as well. Um, so that's kind of uh, really uh, where I landed on this one. Like I said, I still enjoyed this. I don't think I enjoyed it as much as I did as a kid, but it still kind of, I felt like that uh, imagination coming out again. Um, and I'm really interested to continue this series just because it'll be my first time through all of the other books. But I wanted to do this video kind of talking about it for the buddy read as well. I don't know if I'll do a video for each one. I'll have to see. Uh, but uh, I'll probably at least do one for the, the second book, Tombs of Atuan, uh, just because I'm, I'm really excited to get to that one. So hopefully uh, those of you who joined us for this will be continuing on with the buddy read. We're doing at least the first three, even though there's more in this book. Uh, but we'll kind of see and go from there. Make sure to give the video a like if you enjoyed it. Check the link in the description for the Wizard They Do at Discord. If you want to chat this book, other books, any books, really anything at all, it's a lot of fun and we would love to have you. And of course, if you enjoy my content, make sure to subscribe.